Hey everyone, it's Blake here from ChessPathways.com. In today's openings video, we're going to be discussing the Baldur attack. The Baldur attack starts out as a Sicilian defense, so we're going to have pawn to e4, and black's going to respond with c5. This is the starting position of the Sicilian. And white has many possible moves here, but in the Baldur attack, they're going to choose bishop to c4, and I would go as far as to call this move a mistake by white. This move is very often played at lower levels of chess against the Sicilian defense, as well as some variants of it. You might see, for example, knight f3, knight c6, and only now bishop c4. This is still a Baldur attack, but it's not a great move, and I think the reason that a lot of beginners play this move is that they're used to playing e4, e5 openings. So let's talk about the difference here. In a symmetrical king's pawn opening, after e4, e5, this bishop often is very well placed on c4. There's openings like the Italian game that begin with knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, and this is a very well-respected opening. The bishop's great here on c4. It's an actively developed piece, and it's taking aim at this weak square here on f7, and it's also putting the d5 square under control. There's a lot of e4, e5 openings where this bishop is best placed on c4, and a lot of players at this level are just now learning the opening principles, which is great. They know they want to develop their pieces, but they're not really memorizing all these different openings yet, and this leads them to playing the same kind of setup against anything black throws at them. And this approach can lead to playing some moves that are safe, but that are suboptimal. And the Baldur attack is a prime example of this. So let's talk about why this bishop c4 move is pretty much never seen at top level chess, and how black can exploit it. There's a couple main reasons why. Number one is that in a lot of these Sicilian positions, if white doesn't open the center and go for an open Sicilian, White's going to have a space advantage here on the center and king side, and black's going to try to expand here on the queen side. Black will sometimes play an idea like a6 and b5 trying to expand, or maybe even a later rook b8 and immediate b5. And this bishop's really walking right into this. Secondly, the pressure you're going to get here on the f7 square that you might get in an e4, e5 opening, it's really going to be non-existent here, because black is probably going to respond by playing e6, and this bishop's not really adding any pressure here to the f7 pawn. And the third reason here is that black can even play d5 in some lines, trying to grab the center for themselves. And once again, that's a move that's going to come with tempo now, because your bishop is here on c4. It'd be a different story if this bishop could help prevent pawn to d5 uh, by adding some pressure here to the d5 square, but white's not really going to succeed in stopping black from playing that move. So let's take a look at how black can play against the Baldur attack. e6 is the most popular answer, just blunting this bishop right away. And let's see how the game can go. Let's say white plays knight f3. This is a move a lot of beginners will play. Uh, they feel very comfortable playing this because you play it all the time in those e4, e5 openings. But black can even just play d5 right away, grab the center and kick this bishop away. And after e takes d5, e takes d5, black already has full control of the center. White could play here bishop b5 check, uh, but that's no concern here for black. Black could just play knight c6 to develop a piece. Uh, this looks like it could be a little scary for black because of knight e5, but this just turns out not to be the case. Black could just play queen c7 now, counterattack this knight, and white really has no tactics here or anything. Black simply has a space advantage here, basically for free. After, for example, knight takes c6, b takes c6, the bishop already has to move again, and there's really not a great square for it. Let's say bishop to e2, knight f6, and it's clear that black is better here despite having double pawns. So that's one option. Going back here after e6, White has tried queen e2 in some games. This does stop d5, because now d5, e takes d5, uh, leads to a pin here, of course. Uh, that would not be good at all for black. But instead, black can just play a little bit more slowly. So instead, after queen e2, black could just play knight c6, developing a piece, knight f3, and now a6, intending to expand here on the queen side and gain some tempos here on the bishop. And white has to be careful. This bishop can easily get trapped. Let's say that white just simply plays a move like uh, castles here. Now after b5, bishop b3, c4, the bishop actually gets trapped here on b3 and black is completely winning. This is like the Noah's Ark trap from the Roy Lopez, uh, but here it happened, of course, in the Baldur attack. So that's no good. So after a6, white has to be careful. White can play c3 here, trying to give this bishop an escape, uh, but black can simply play knight g to e7, possibly renewing the threat here to play d5, D5's on the table, B5's on the table. Uh, the game might go D4, C takes D4, C takes D4, D5. This was one game that continued this way. And it's not the end of the world for white. White could play Bishop B3 here, 
But in this kind of French defense pawn structure, this is probably not the best square for the bishop, especially because white had to play two moves to get it there. And black already has some pretty decent development going on here in the center. So again, not the end of the world, just a little bit suboptimal here from white. One more example, after e6, we could look at what happens if white plays knight to c3, just trying to clamp down on this d5 square and trying to stop black from playing this d5 move. Uh, in this particular game, black gets the move b5 in instead. Knight c6, knight f3, a6, we see this idea once again. Black's ready to expand here on the queen side. Uh, in this game, white tried to play a4, trying to stop black from playing b5. But black just continued knight f6, developing a piece, queen e2, d6, castle, bishop e7, d3. Both sides are just really uh, finishing up development here. Black goes ahead and gets castled. And black is going to try to play rook b8 and then finally get this b5 move in and start their play over here on the queen side. And there's not much that white's going to be able to do to stop this if black's intent on doing this. This position is similar to what you might find in a mainline closed Sicilian. But often the bishop will be on g2 in those lines instead of on c4, and it's clear the bishop is much better placed here on g2. The long diagonal might get opened up after white gets their king side play going with f4 and maybe even e5 in some lines. It helps defend the king, and it's definitely not here to give black some free tempos by playing b5 uh, with an extra tempo there. In this particular game, white played bishop a2, trying to get out of the way of black's expansion. But after rook b8, h3, you get the feeling white's a little bit planless here, playing moves like h3. And now b5 comes anyways, and it looks like black clearly has the more comfortable position to play. So to summarize, there's nothing horribly wrong with the Baldur attack. Bishop c4 is a developing move. If you're a beginner and you're just learning the opening principles, that's totally a reasonable move to choose. But as you get better and you try to optimize your openings more, you'll learn that bishop c4 might be effective in an e4, e5 opening, but it's really not the best time to play this move on move two of the Sicilian. You're giving black some pretty pleasant options to choose from. So if you want to know how to handle the Sicilian defense, you've been playing the Baldur attack and you're not getting the results you want with it, please check down in the description and I'll put a link to my video on the Sicilian defense and you can pick a better option for white that's going to put black under a lot more pressure. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please make sure you visit chesspathways.com and get signed up. I'll go ahead and put a link there down in the description. So please click there and join our community today. It's totally free, only takes five seconds, and all you need is an email address. It took me way too long to become a chess master, and I want to help you do it in a fraction of the time. Thanks, and I will see you there.